Hi, welcome to Possibilities Publishing's Author Hangout. Uh, tonight we are here with two of the authors of Pacifiers Anonymous, uh, Su Sumi Sexton and Ruby Natal Andrew. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Uh, Ruby, you want to go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Ruby, as the book refers me to. I'm a child psychologist with a interest and focus on working with young children between the ages of birth through five. And Dr. Sexton approached me a couple years ago about writing a book on pacifiers because there were no resources available for parents in this area. And so her with her medical degree and me with my degree in psychology, we thought we'd make a perfect team on coming up with some really good resources for parents of young children and helping them wean their child from the pacifier or from the thumb. My child, uh, who's now seven, never quite took to the pacifier or the thumb, and that was largely because of me, because of the negative things I've heard about using the pacifier, how it interferes with breastfeeding, how it can be um, related to other problems with speech, and with um, deformities of the mouth, and so I tried everything in my power not to get her to use a pacifier. And as a result, she didn't, but she was highly addicted, and I use the term addicted, to the breast. Um, so I breastfed her until she was almost three. And that was her soothing mechanism. So in the book, we talk a lot about um, alternates to using the pacifier or the thumb because that, that really is why children use it. It's for soothing. And so um, that's one of our major approaches in this book is to get children to not just suck for uh, non-nutritive purposes, but to use other strategies to get them to calm themselves. Great. Um, Thank you. Um, Sumi, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and talk a little bit about uh, what prompted you to want to write this book? Sure. My name is uh, Dr. Subi Sexton, and I have a practice in Arlington, Virginia. And along with that, I also do editing of a medical journal. So I'm very interested at the science behind things, and I'm always curious as to why people do things that they do. And specifically with the pacifier, both of my children and also I was a former, former pacifier addict, as Dr. Ruby said. Um, so I was very interested in the science behind it. A, why were they doing it? Of course, I was wanting to know how I could quit, uh, have them both quit the habit, but then I was wondering, was it really such a bad thing? Was I a bad parent? Are there some good things to the pacifier? So almost kind of opposite to Dr. Ruby's approach in terms of not wanting her kids to use the pacifier, I had already taken that leap and did it, and I knew there were some actual benefits, but I didn't know that much about it. So I wanted to research not only for myself, but for, for my patients as well. So some of the benefits that can go with it are SIDS reduction, specifically after one month of life. And of course, if it's used too long, we do get worried about changes in the teeth, dental issues later, ear infections, and as Ruby mentioned, speech issues. But it is a good tool for soothing, and with SIDS being a, a big concern mainly from age, age one, a month of life, through age 12 months, specifically like one to six months being the, the peak time, it's not a bad idea for parents that want to use it. So it was good it was good to find resources that there are some good things behind it and there's actually research as to why babies suck in the first place and then as Ruby said it's all about transitioning them to other forms of soothing and learning alternative al alternative um, behaviors that can help stop the pacifier. Great. 
Um, so let me just dive right in and say that it seems like the topic of pacifiers is really divisive among parents. And, and as you both kind of have talked about a little bit, that there's uh, parents who think it's terrible and parents who think it's great. And um, like I recently have two friends, both had a baby within the last couple of months, and the one just right away using the pacifier all the time, and the other I, I mentioned it in passing. Whether uh, what, asking where the pacifier was, and she looked at me as if I had uh, said something completely absurd and ridiculous um, to think that she would be using a pacifier. So, where do you think that comes from? What's um, where? What does that divisiveness come from, and, and what is it um, doing the moms? Well, um, I can I can take this one and. Because I get this question all the time. I see lots of babies in my office. Parents are often asking the question, is it okay if I use a pacifier? I don't know what to do. My baby's crying all the time. And it really is, you know, of course there's science that I mentioned some of it and I can go through more of it, but it really comes down to a personal choice. Because in the end, there is sort of this naturalist theory that I'd rather have my child suck a thumb rather than use a pacifier. And also there's thoughts about, you know, pacifier and plastics and um, the products that are used to make plastics. And actually these days were um, pacifiers actually BPA-free. But so there's sort of the one more naturalist approach and teach your children to self-soothe without the pacifier. And then there is the other approach, which is, hey, if there is some scientific benefit, if it can reduce SIDS, if it can make me not be a stressed out mommy and actually get through the day, then hey, I'll do it. So it truly comes down to a philosophical thing. There are also some cultural differences. We did some research looking at different countries in terms of who uses the pacifier, who doesn't, who's more into breastfeeding. And by and large, I would say the industrialized countries are probably the ones that use the pacifier most. We think this may have to do with also because the availability of the bottle as opposed to other countries that are not so industrialized may rely more on breastfeeding and not use the, the pacifier and bottle as much. All right, and so does your book come down really on like one side or the other or it sounds like you're more of just sort of explore the topic in general, pros and cons? Yeah, I think it's important, really important to give parents and caregivers tools. So that's what the point of the book is. In terms of, you know, I've looked at a lot of parenting books and, and talked to parents about them, and a lot of them take the approach that, hey, this is what you do, do this, X, Y, and Z, done. And I don't think that that's really a fair approach, especially because there are such a variety of cultures, personal perspectives, and different lifestyles that play a role here. So our goal was to look at all the perspectives. Why do kids suck in the first place? What are the pros? What are the cons? So you can look at it and say, hey, I have a baby that has lots of ear infections. Maybe the pacifier is not the right choice for me and, and, and my child. And that makes sense. And so having all the pros and cons from the scientific standpoint and then also having the tools to stop when you're ready. So it sort of does provide both sides, both the psychological aspect, the scientific aspect, and then what real parents have said. We actually have a little survey that where we looked at parents to see what, did, what actually worked for them and what were their thoughts in the pacifier and the thumb. And is there any um, benefit or do you have an opinion on sort of just um, starting right away, just right, you know, giving the pacifier right away, or waiting to see maybe if a child might have an inclination towards it or not, or be more of a thumb sucker. Do you talk about that at all? Um, well, I think as as Dr. Sumi said, there's pros and cons to both. And in our book, I think it's step three. As you know, the book is written in a twelve step process, um, which kind of goes along with the AA model of 12 steps to giving up an addiction or a vice is, is how we term it and we know that you know pacifier thumb sucking is not a true addiction but in a child's world that is something that they rely on and that they crave and that they need per se 
And so in step three of our book, we talk about the pros and cons of using a pacifier over the thumb. And there's a really nice table there that also summarizes, you know, the choices on whether or not to get a child to start using it or not. I think a lot of it is is the child's preference as well. I mean, some children have more of an affinity for what we call a non-nutritive sucking, which means they suck not to get milk, um, but to get to but to soothe themselves. And so, um, you know, you can you can follow the child's lead and go along with that, or you can do what I did and say absolutely not, you can't do this, and rip their hand out of their mouth every time they try to suck their thumb and take the, you know, never give them a pacifier. Um, and so I, I think the biggest thing to be aware of in, in using the thumb over the pacifier is that the thumb is something that's easily accessible for the child. So um, at nighttime, if a parent's trying to get a little extra sleep and the child's up crying all the time, the child can easily suck their thumb because it's there with them, attached to their body at all times, whereas the pacifier is not accessible. So it falls out of their mouth and the child's in the crib and the parent has to wake up, put the pacifier back in their mouth. Um, so that's a lot of the reasons why typically uh, maybe a, pa a parent will lean more toward the thumb initially versus the pacifier. But the negative to make sure parents are aware of is that uh, while the thumb is attached to the child's body, that means it's not something you can get rid of e either. So it's much more difficult for the child to wean themselves from the thumb versus the pacifier. The pacifier, you can just throw it out. Um, the thumb, you can't. It takes a longer weaning process. So um, some of the research that we did kind of shows that the pacifier starts earlier but ends earlier and thumb sucking kind of starts later but ends later. So there's um, pros and cons to both. Great, and as you said, yes, the book does go through the 12 steps, which is, um, I think, a very clever way of approaching it, and it um, chops it up nicely into manageable steps. And um, the book is about kicking the habit, and that's the, the rest of the title, Pacifiers Anonymous, how to kick the um, pacifier thumb something sucking habit. Um, so while you do go through a lot of the science and talk about the pros and cons of um, each piece, as we've talked about, um, you do focus a lot on how to how to break that habit. And so at what age do you recommend that you start working towards breaking that habit? So the biggest thing in, when we wrote the, uh, the book was looking at what different guidelines said in terms of what the American Academy of Pediatrics said about this, um, what the American Dental Association said. And so we have to think about, first of all, what are the cons of the pacifier and what would make you stop in the first place? Of course, as, as Ruby mentioned, there's this pseudo addiction. So that's one reason that we might stop where you would want a child to learn alternative um, ways of soothing instead of just sucking on the pacifier. Then there is the ear infections, which I mentioned already, which are biggest between six months and 12 months is when we get more. Of course, we're concerned if it occurs earlier, but since SIDS, the risk of SIDS starts to decrease between six and 12 months, that's typically when I tell parents to start thinking about weaning. They don't have to stop all the time, but that's when they can start reducing back to like nighttime or nap time and limit use overall. But from the dental standpoint, teeth changes start occurring after one year of life, but more significantly after two years and almost irreversibly after four years of life. So the goal is starting around six months to start to wean, teaching your child alternative soothing techniques, and then really by age two to try to pull the plug. Okay, that's great. Uh, we have a question from a parent who, who wrote in uh, for this. So she says, I started the process of weaning my almost two-year-old off her pacifier, but she was so miserable and she cried so much, broke my heart, and ended up letting her have it again. Have I screwed this up? Does it mean she's now going to have this passing until she's in college? I can I can talk a little bit about that. Um, 
it's always good, of course, to be consistent. So when you start something, you want to stop. You know, you want to you want to continue through and not stop. Um, but there's also that saying: if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So all hope is not lost. Um, I would definitely encourage you to give it another round. And as the first step in the process, I would suggest um, trying to determine if the sucking is an emotional habit or an empty habit. And by that, I mean. Um, is a child sucking to soothe himself because there's something going on in their environment or is it just kind of an empty habit that they're just sucking just to suck? And so how can you tell the difference between the two? And in our book, um, there's a list of questions that I encourage parents to just kind of ask themselves about what's going on in their environment. So is maybe, has there been a new move? You know, have you moved to a new house? Is there, is a mom pregnant? Is there a new baby in the family? there been any deaths in the family, um, any types of traumas, or just really any types of changes that maybe the child is relying more on that pacifier to help them soothe. Just like us as adults, we have a crutch, you know, something that we go to when it's a difficult time, and children sense that, and they have difficult times in their lives also. So um, as a first step, and before you try again, I would try to determine what it is that maybe is, is keeping the child attached to needing that pacifier. And then as a second step, um, already be prepared that if it is more of an emotional habit to, uh, to replace the pacifier or the thumb with a different coping mechanism. So maybe teach the child if they are upset or when, um, you know, if they're a little bit older, what they can do in replace of sucking their thumb or pacifier. Maybe they could rock you know, have a rocking chair, maybe they could listen to soft music. Um, if the baby, if it's just a baby, maybe the parent can do some infant massages to help the child soothe. Um, so really just kind of being creative and, and, and trying to read your child's cues to see what it is that they need. Um, we definitely do not advocate just taking the pacifier, cutting it cold turkey, and not replacing it with anything. That could be traumatizing to the child. I mean, they've been attached to this object for one, two, three, four, five years. And so to just take it, throw it away, and have them never see it again isn't really fair to the child. So um, we advocate for replacing whatever it is um, that the child is using to cope with a different strategy or maybe a different soothing technique, giving them more baths at night, singing to them, rubbing their back. Um, and, and keeping that in mind, it's just it's a, a fair way to, to do this with a child, and I think the child would respond much better in, in keeping those those two ideas in mind. Great, thanks. Um, we also um, have another question. So, if someone were to pick up the book today um, and want to start the process of weaning their child, um, how long roughly would it take, or can you even give an estimate? Sure, we we can give an estimate. I mean, certainly there's a range, and it depends on what is going on. As Dr. Ruby pointed out, if it's an empty habit or an emotional habit, and one thing to keep in mind is she mentioned the cold turkey method, and the cold turkey, you know, take it out, pull it out, throw it away. That is actually an effective method for those child with an empty habit. And so for those children that have more of the emotional concern, um, that's when we would be talking about, you know, of course we always want to replace a child's way to soothe, but in terms of the techniques that have been most effective in actually stopping pacifier use in those with an empty habit, it's actually the cold turkey approach. And in, in our own research, the most effective method was cold turkey and it took about a week. It typically takes about one week for a child to sort of forget, move on. And of course, you, you look out for a child, you, you don't want them to be traumatized, you look out for signs, and it's, but it's sometimes difficult as a parent to gauge that because you never want to see your child cry and be upset. And for a child, Sometimes it is the pacifier or their thumb that gives them the most relief. Now, of course, the cold turkey method is, doesn't really apply to the thumb because that's more of a natural process. But for the pacifier, the, the, the typical 
extinct, if we want to use the term extinction, is about a week. But in those situations where a caregiver or parent may be wavering, where they give the pacifier uh, one day or with a grandparent or something who gives in and, and doesn't want to um, keep with the program, that makes it harder. And so that can make the uh, make make it a longer process. And that can be confusing to the child. So it's important that everybody's on the same page. And there are other ways of doing the cold turkey, as, as Dr. Ruby mentioned, instead of just, you know, throwing it in the trash, there are more creative ways to doing that, which are still effective cold turkey method, but it's, you know, sending it off with a, a fairy or, you know, giving it to Santa Claus to help other children. There are many different creative ways to achieve the same quick extinction in a week period without traumatizing a child. And in, um, in step seven of our book, we actually list 12 different approaches that um, a parent could take. So you can always try different methods and just see what it is that, that works best for you. It's not one size fits all. Um, I, I would encourage you to read through step seven of the book, look at the 12 different strategies, and see what it is that makes most sense for you and your family. Great. All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you both so much for um, being here with me tonight to do this. And once again, the book is um, Pacifiers Anonymous. Um, I guess it's probably backwards, I think. Um, but it is available through Amazon, uh, both as Kindle uh, download and as a hard copy. Um, and you can find out more information about this book and uh, Possibilities Publishing and our other authors at possibilitiespublishingcompany.com. Um, and that's it. If you have any more questions um, after watching this video, if you're not on live, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and we will try to respond back to them. Um, all right. Well, once again, uh, Dr. Ruby and Dr. Sumi, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.